Okay, boys and girls, we have a um, a reverber rocket. Not sure of the year, but um, it's definitely in early 60s. It's already been updated. It has a uh, new master capacitor can, a couple of new caps here, new cap over here. I don't want to stand in the way. And uh, a couple of cathode bypass caps over here. So it's pretty well up to date, except that these Ampeg tubes are original. Uh, or they're new old stock, one or the other. Anyway, the amp has no reverb. So I'm going to try and figure out why that is. I'm going to start with some simple stuff. And uh, here we go. Here's your <coughs> volumes up, dimensions on 10. So we have the sound of reverb when you tap on the tank. But if I plug in the cable, whoops. There's no reverb coming through to the output. Yeah, you should have a rich, swampy, ampeg reverb. Does everything have to be a problem? Looks like I'm going to have to cut it and redo it. This will not budge. Okay, you're getting cut. Red goes to echo. Will not come out. Okay, well, I'm going to cut it here, and if I have to, I will drill this these wires out, which uh, isn't such a bad idea if I could find my drill. Well, it looks like about a quarter inch hole. There's no way that I'm pulling this off. This is just unbelievable. There we go. Okay. Now let's make sure the wire will fit through. open okay switch is working so now I have to clean it up
Okay. There's a lot of oxidation on these wires. Let's hope for the best. Yeah, we're good. Interesting. This is all good. Okay, next thing we got to do is make sure that we have a connection from the switch to the internal wiring in the amplifier. Alright, so I'm going to shut this off. Let's go back to here. Okay. Okay, we're going from the white on the switch to the white here. And if I get my hands out of the way, let me redo this. Okay, there we go. Good. Now the red. I can't seem to do this without getting my hands in the way. So let me move this here. Hopefully the speaker magnet doesn't have an effect on the reading. Sometimes the oxidation on these terminals can get in your way. Okay, so all is good here. Now let's try the ground. All right, I'm going to have to... F okay, here's a good ground right here. All right, so everything is good. It's not the switch and it's not the wire. Before I'm done I'll put a little bit of uh, rubber cement in here because I enlarged the hole a little bit. I realized I could have accessed it through here, but there's no way I was tearing this ancient rubber pad off because I would have destroyed it. Okay, a screwdriver. All right, so we just eliminated the switch. It's plural, switches and the wire. So that's one thing down. Okay, now let's try the reverb cables. There's one, there's the other, and of course it's a mess in here to see what we're doing. Okay, I'm going to put a little mark on this. So I know what's what. Okay, one black line goes into here. So here's the, the other one, black line. 
Okay, here we go. Again, these are filthy. So, what I'm going to do, I could do this with the Dremel, but this is convenient. I'm going to try to get some of this oxidation off. Oh boy, I've got to put on a mask. Alright, let me get a mask. Okay, I need a different brush. There we go. These really come in handy. Okay, doing the outside of the connector, the grounded part, is a waste of time because it doesn't touch anything. So I need to get inside a bit. Now, here we go. I'm not sure this is even going to get in there. So, the only other thing I can do So I got this guy in there. Okay, he's back on. Sorry if you can't see that, but I'm just inserting the bottle brush into the connector. Okay, now of course the reverb tank needs to be cleaned off. Try a different brush. Give it a shot one more time. Give this a squirt. Squirt this. Move it around a little bit. Alright, let's turn it on and see what we got. And then we gotta test the tubes. I think it's working. to me that the other day I plugged in a different reverb tank even though it's the wrong impedance um, it would give me some sound if the problem was this tank and I didn't get any sound so I'm gonna have to look further all right kill the power um, let me just see which tube is reverb of course, it could be more than one tube. Of course. All right. All 
R12R. It has a reverb unit. It says it's a V3. Alright, let's test V3. Oh boy, it's a Joint Army Navy 6188, which I'm pretty sure is a replacement for a 6SN7. Let's see what happens. Okay, let's check some voltages. Hello everybody. To continue on from yesterday, um, while I was testing around, we had already tested the tubes. Uh, I checked the cables going to and from the reverb, make sure there was continuity going into the circuit. Uh, I tested, I tried a different reverb tank. Uh, what else? I checked the switches in the foot switch. I made sure that there was and redid the cable uh, connections inside uh, so I have continuity going all the way in into the amplifier and um, anyway I started exploring around and I think this is a <clears throat> I don't remember anymore I think it's either a plate load resistor <clears throat> or it's a resistor that's used just to drop some of the voltage so that the plate of the tube has the right voltage to work well with it but anyway, it's dead as a doornail. Uh, I'll just show you that. Let's watch the meter. Zippo. It's open. So anyway, I just got the new resistor today. There's a 2.2, .2, brand new. Soldered it in place. And bango, we got really nice, beautiful Ampeg Reverb Rocket Reverb. <laughs> Okay, so this amp is fixed, and um, I hope you got something out of it. Remember those things to test. Um, make sure you've covered them all, because any one of them could have caused the reverb to not work. Thanks for watching.